Hey there, everybody. So I wanted to talk a bit about volumetric video today. I think the scene from Minority Report does a really good job of illustrating how powerful volumetric video could be for just capturing memories in home movies and things like that, even if it's not visually perfect. The word hologram has sort of become interchangeable for volumetric video, and while nothing I'll be showing today actually uses holography, it is often the easiest and fastest way to talk about this kind of stuff, mostly because of how prevalent holograms are in sci-fi things like Minority Report and Star Trek and Star Wars. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I've worked with RGBD or using depth maps to create a type of volumetric video, and the limitations of that. Today I want to talk a little bit about how I've been using machine learning to make more advanced volumetric videos, and show you what that process is like. This paper, published in 2020, is pretty much the bleeding edge of volumetric video, in my opinion, and you can see some of the results down here. Here's a still image of a welder, and, I mean, it's just incredible. And here's some motion, some video. Again, within the limited field of view, it's pretty excellent. Now, it does require quite an extensive rig. And then if we go ahead and look at the paper, we can just scroll down here and then, oh. So yeah, it takes over a day per frame. That's probably not gonna work. But like I said, this paper was published in 2020. If we go back a couple of years, there was an earlier paper published in 2018 called Stereo Magnification. The goal of this paper was to take stereo input, a left and right image, and extrapolate the baseline, meaning make the left and right eyes wider. This technique does a pretty good job with shiny surfaces, as you can see on the countertop, the fridge, and in the picture frames, especially when compared with something like RGBD. Again, very close left and right images, and then wider left and right synthesized images. Now the way it does this is by creating multi-plane images, which is not exactly a new idea. Disney used it in many films to create a sense of parallax in their artwork. Actually, let's let Walt Disney explain it to us a little bit. The different elements in the scene were separated according to their varying distances from the viewer. This put the moon on a plane farthest away from the camera. With our original picture broken down in this manner, it is possible to control the relative speed with which each individual part of it moves to or away from the camera. But the moon remains absolutely still and so it will always remain the same, neither growing nor shrinking in size. So that's how the multiplane principle works. You have images on different planes at different depths from the camera, and that allows you to simulate parallax during movement. On a side note, I actually used to work on the Disney animation lot in Burbank, and I would occasionally pass by one of the multiplane cameras that's in the lobby in one of the buildings there, and it is absolutely every bit as cool as it seems. And it allowed for shots like this from Pinocchio. Notice how the planes at different depths move at different rates, giving you a sense of parallax and creating that feeling of a three-dimensional space. Now, where Disney's multiplane camera had four or five planes, we're going to use machine learning to create an arbitrary number, although we're going to stick with 32 because it's sort of a trade-off between resolution and number of layers and also video RAM. So what does an MPI look like? Well, here's one I have right here. It's essentially just a bunch of PNGs with transparency. You can see as I swap through them, there's sort of a plane of transparency that sweeps in from the back. Here's another one, and you can see again that plane of transparency sweeping up from the back towards the front. Here you can see the left and right source image. I'll just open this in Stereo Photo Maker and flip between them. And then here's the corresponding MPI output. Again, you can see that plane sweeping forward. So if we go ahead and stack these all in Unity, then I get a volumetric image. Of course, if I move too far or too close, there's that sort of stack of playing cards effect in the distortion. The more layers of MPI you have, the smoother that would be. But again, you know, we're splitting the entire depth range into 32 layers. If I go ahead and pull this up on the Looking Glass Portrait, which is a volumetric display, I can rotate the display and you can sort of see around the corners. I can also shift the plane of focus by moving the MPI forward and backwards. You can see 
the background is in focus here, and then I can move it, and then now the foreground is in focus. Now even further into the foreground, just this little tool or makeup case is, is in focus. And I can move it back again towards the puppets, and then back towards the audience. I can also incorporate 3D objects. Here I have a little sphere that I can move behind this little screen and then in front of the screen. And I can circle it all around, I can move it wherever I want, and it really does feel like it is in 3D space. Uh, here's another shot I took. This is of an old Mustang, and you can see that the parking meter really does feel like it's in front of the Mustang. I'll just pop into Unity and you can see more of a close-up. And then uh, here I'll, I'll turn the sphere on and move the sphere around behind the parking meter. And then how about into the car? We'll just uh, we'll put it in the passenger seat. We can also look at these in VR. So here is the puppet frame I just showed you. And I'm looking at this in VR on a Quest 2 over Oculus Link. You can notice that stack of cards effect again, but I mean, it is not too bad considering there's just two input sources. And here's the Mustang. Again, these, you know, these aren't intended to be viewed in VR, but we can. By the way, both of these shots were shot on a Kandao Ego, which is a new stereo camera that fits in your pocket. I backed this on Kickstarter and it is a very fun camera. So let's go ahead and make an MPI. Uh, here's a stereo source that I have of some sunflowers. Uh, I'll open up my script, which I call Empire. And you can see a little King Kong there. He says, nice planes. A little pun for you. So here I have some settings. You can set the focal length, the baseline. Inference size is going to be the resolution of each MPI layer. Uh, the near plane and the far plane, I usually set to 1 and 10. Um, this, this are, these are sort of a guess. They're based on the focal length and the baseline and some of the math. But uh, we're really just trying to get something that looks good. And we're not really too worried about being dimensionally accurate. So some of these numbers are fudged a little bit. The focal length, for example, is not accurate for the Kandao. Um, there's some other numbers, but that's not really so important since we're just looking at this by eye and trying to make it look good. So I set the near plane and the far plane to something that I think is reasonable based on just my experience. And then we process an MPI and you can see each layer shows up here as a little PNG. And I'll go through them here. You can see the plane sweep in from the back. Yeah, this actually looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in Unity. And here it also is on the looking glass. Not too bad. I do notice there's a bit of a, a like some holes in the front here, sort of a depth there that has some holes. But I think we can clear that up if we just adjust the near plane a little closer. And we'll reprocess. Here come the new MPIs. And you can see that near plane. Now there's some wasted space here. There's a few MPIs that are almost completely transparent, but it does fix the issue. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one. Since you've already seen the workflow, I'm just going to speed through it here. You can see I'm just kind of guessing on the settings and trying to get something that looks good. Opening it up in Unity, taking a look, changing some settings, trying again. But here I did want to show you this. If I click Separate Alpha and then Process, you can see now I don't get PNGs, I get JPEGs. These are just regular color JPEGs, one for each layer, but then also a corresponding black and white mask that represents the alpha for each layer. I can also quiltify this, to sort of borrow a phrase from Looking Glass, but it just means arranging all of the images and masks into an array. Having all of the MPIs compiled into a single image allows me to then put multiple frames together into a video. 
like this one I have here of a Ferris wheel. And if we open this up in Unity, you can see the MPI video or MPV in action. And here's another one of the Chinese theater. And you see if I pause this, you can sort of see through the windows behind the cars. Pretty cool. I shot this with a custom stereo camera that I built, which has a much wider baseline than the Kandao, which may explain why it's pretty good even at that distance. I'm still doing some experimenting with what the optimal baseline is for different distances to get the best MPIs. So here I have a folder of stereo pairs. Let's go ahead and make a video. I'll speed through this since it's the same workflow pretty much. I guess on the near and far planes, adjust and then take a look in Unity, adjust some more, take a look in Unity again, until I get something I'm happy with. And then I just press the separate alpha, quiltify, and make quilt video buttons. And then it just goes. Here we are 43 minutes later, I have a folder full of quilts, and an MP4. Let's take a look at it in Unity and on the looking glass. Not bad. I'm not sure it caught the bees the way I wanted it to, but it's not bad. Let's take a look at it in VR. Again, these are not necessarily meant to be seen in VR, but yeah, it's still pretty good. Let's look at some more videos I've shot. Here's a security gate closing on a garage. It's sort of a torture test with all of the thin lines and, you know, the sort of low lighting. And while it is very distorted if you move near it, it's actually not bad when looked at from the right angle. And you do get a sense of that there's geometry behind the gate. Here's some video of a crowd at the Pride Parade. The sense of depth here is really great. This one looks pretty good. Here's that ferris wheel. A lot of the straight lines feel distorted and sort of swimming a little bit when you're moving around, but there is a good sense of depth and parallax with all of the beams, and the movement is smooth. There are definitely some newer view synthesis techniques that can do an even better job with shiny and refractive surfaces, such as neural radiance fields seen here, and I do want to play with some of them in the future. But generally, those also require a pretty large set of input images, and I don't think anyone's done Nerf video yet. That's why I'm really liking the stereo magnification technique. It only requires a stereo pair, and I can get video out of it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts, or if you have any ideas of things that might be interesting to see as a multiplane video. Okay, until next time, bye.